One useful GPS feature is the user entered waypoint. Most all the units will hold more of these than you'll ever use, but many pilots find good use for a few of them. The thing that most immediately comes to mind is a private airport that's not in the database. Another might be a useful navigational point at home base or another airport that you use a lot. For example, on the GPS approach to runway 9 at my home base, Hagerstown, Maryland, the 246 radial at 10 miles defines a point where a descent can be made on a published segment of the approach. So, I have that as a user waypoint in one of my navigators. When I'm coming in from the west, IFR, I just ask the controller if I can go direct to the 246 at 10 and then fly the approach to runway 9. When using any second navigator as backup, it's critical that the waypoints are accurately entered. If they're not, this backup could be more confusing than helpful. In many dual GPS installations, there's a cross-fill feature that enables the automatic loading of a flight plan from one navigator to the other one. On approach-approved units, the missed approach point is usually the end of the runway, where the airport waypoint in any navigator is at the airport reference point, which is at or near the geographical center of the airport. There's usually about a half mile difference between the end of the runway waypoint and the airport waypoint, which is no big deal unless you were trying to line up with and execute a power off approach to that runway. Then distance to the end of the runway would be invaluable. Another neat feature is the display of the final approach course on the GPS map. All approach approved units will do this, as will many handhelds. This is useful for VFR arrivals in restricted visibility or when the sun's in your eyes. With that depiction, for example, you can fly to and intercept the final approach course a couple of miles from the airport and enable a precise arrival instead of one where you're squinting to see the airport.